You're listening to episode 14 of the Fearless English Podcast. Welcome to the Fearless English Podcast, where it's all about helping you confidently communicate with anyone without compromising who you are. Let's get started, Fearless Learner. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm super excited about this episode. I have someone super cool talking to us about mindset and confidence when you're learning English. Today, I have Coach Rhoda, who is going to be talking to us about this topic. And hopefully, by the end of this episode, you'll be able to walk away feeling like you can start doing a few things to help you get started when it comes to increasing your confidence when it comes to language learning. Hello, Rhoda. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Halima. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's actually a pleasure to be on the podcast. I remember when you kind of like set up the podcast, I was like, oh my God, I'd love to feature. Um, So thank you so much for inviting me. Of course, of course. It's my pleasure. So we're going to go straight in. I want everybody to know who you are. Give us a little bit of a background story about who you are, what you do, and so on. Okay, so my name is Rhoda, and just like Halima, I am. I did actually go into the UK as I was around eight years old when I actually moved into the UK, and I spoke no English at all. And I do remember, like, literally, I remember, like, some stories from when I kind of, like, went into school and I was so eager to kind of, like, learn because I didn't want to be this child, like, who was clueless. And I think with me, I've always been this person who's very passionate about learning and, like, trying my best. So I'll try so hard. I think within, like, about six months, I was, like, speaking um, fluently. And I got into writing. Eventually, I got into poetry, basically. Here I am now. Age 31, I've done various different things. Um, I've been a student always, to be honest, like I'm always learning things. Training right now as part of my coaching program in a program called NLP, which actually focuses on linguistics, like how to kind of like communicate effectively. And I am a business coach currently and business mindset coach. And I specifically focus on like uh, working with new coaches in terms of like their mindset and how they could actually up level so that they can put themselves out there in a very kind of like authentic way. I'm still quite new to the whole coaching world, but it's something that's helped me a lot in terms of like my personal development. Um, And I'm still kind of like learning, training, uh, planning to do a master's in counseling, hopefully um, this September. So got a lot going on there. Um, I do have a full-time job as well as a projects manager. Um, I was actually homeschooling my three children as well. So it's like trying to do various different things. And I think, to be honest, it's been like the best year of my life, just literally doing things for myself and not like thinking about others, um, Mm -hmm. not doing things to please others, just for my own kind of like well-being. And it's been really good, to be honest, yeah. I love that. Thank you so much for updating us with what's going on. That I mean, I I love. I don't know. I've got a lot to say, but that's my <laughs> small. That's like me trying to summarize. I struggle with like summarizing uh, what I do and all of that. So no, you know. I love it so much. I love 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 the fact that you've gone through this confidence journey. So I I can't wait to hear about like all the nuances and details of what helped you kind of move on from being scared to I'm going to give this a try and then knowing these are the milestones that I'm reaching for and all these milestones are things that you're absolutely terrified about but you have them in the plan and you want to actually pursue these things which is amazing. I didn't mention another business I actually have. I'm co-founder of a, a modest fashion wear line as well. So amazing. Um, I have like various different projects happening at the same time but to be honest I think it's been like a really good journey like for me like it's been the best time ever just because I'm doing things for myself like I'm doing it for me um and that's been helping me like I get a lot of people who kind of like come to me and be like how could you do this and how could you do that like how are you juggling all of this and I'm like I feel comfortable enough to be able to do it like I I have no issues and I think it's the whole mindset thing when you think in your head oh no I won't be able to do this I won't be able to do that when you think about it we all have the same 24 hours 
Yeah. It's just the way you kind of like utilize that time. And I do it in a way like in the beginning when I kind of like started the whole business and like the whole like self-development journey, I invested in coaches. I remember working 24 seven and that wasn't good for me because I was going back, falling back into that place where I felt um, quite low, quite miserable. I felt like giving up. And um, I reached this level right now where I just try my best. Um, I try to, I reduce like my work um, timing so that it's, everything's kind of like aligned with my values and how I kind of like feel and it's been helping me a lot because as someone with like I've got high function anxiety and as someone with high function anxiety the likelihood of me falling back into like those um low states is very it's quite high so I limit the workload that I'm doing I try my best to kind of like keep up with like my goals but I don't worry too much about making things perfect about having things perfect about the things I used to do before, like procrastinating, yeah. perfection, and with me, perfection is like a big thing. And because of like me constantly striving for perfection, I was unable to do a lot of things. And um, I was unable to do a lot of things. And now it's like so much easier for me to actually just try different things and just go for it and try my best, really. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's so inspiring just listening to you. I'm like, oh, I can just listen to her all day. Thank you. Because this is something that <laughs> I you. I struggled with as well with the whole. What do I do with my business? What do I do with other things and so on? And this just kind of like there's it's a lot. I mean, you have to be good at time management for you to be able to juggle all these things. Procrastination and watching Netflix for three hours just doesn't cut it anymore. You don't you just don't have time for that. But it's also important to make sure that you're focusing on how do I take care of myself so I'm not burning that's out. True. And that's like I, I've never heard of the term high functioning, but I feel like from what you're saying, I have that disease. <laughs> I know it's not a disease. <laughs> it's not a disease. Yeah, no. um, but it's uh, it's something very common to be honest, especially yeah. like with those like with entrepreneurs and like businesswomen, like people try like like we're trying so many different things and we don't realize until sometimes like you fall into this really low state and it's like oh god, like how do I get out of this? Um, and I think with all of this, I think for me the biggest struggle wasn't ever like just about perfection. It was like always trying to please others, like do things for the sake of others and like trying to put myself out there so people be like, oh wow, like this girl's doing this and this. But I reached the stage where I do things for myself. Like I try to cut out any triggers. Like like there's people who wouldn't really support you in that sense. And that kind of like does affect your confidence level as well. And I've been doing various different things to ensure that I'm like okay mentally. Because yeah. um, I know like with regards to like mental health, physical health is very much kind of like involved. Yeah. And I'm someone who's, I've endured like burnout a lot. I've been in hospital for burnout when I was in my first ever degree that I was doing. I was doing a degree in radiotherapy and oncology. I had like, so basically, I used to go to placement um, in in Reading, and I was living in London. It was a two-hour journey to go, two-hour journey to come back. At the end of that placement, I became really sick. I ended like I literally had sepsis, and the doctors didn't know what was causing. Like, like they didn't even tell what was wrong. It was just like I was on antibiotics, I was on IV fluids. Um, but thinking back, years later, I realized it was definitely it was nothing else but burnout. And the thing is, I've had, it happened again, like a few times. And that's the thing. So right now, like I literally try to reduce kind of like my workload, any programs that I'm doing, any courses that I'm doing, because I have, I have this habit of like joining like various different courses. I get really excited when someone like doing a course. I'm like, I want to learn. like, I've always been this person who wants to learn and like just work on my personal development. And, um, and for me, it's not just for me like I want my kids to see this person like who's got everything put together who's who's confident who's able to kind of like help them in a manner where um they have that confidence as well as children so that they can Rather, progress um yeah sorry to stop you um you're speaking at like 3,000 miles of hour. Oh, sorry about and, that. And, oh, God. And, and, no, yeah. it's okay. It's fine. Like, but I'll it's just yeah, the, yeah. my uh, students, <laughs> they're English as a second language learner. So they're going to be like, ah. Like, oh, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> I'll, I'll slow down. I have this really bad habit. When I get into something, I just, I talk really fast. <laughs> and like, yeah, I'll, I'll slow down completely. Sorry, sorry. Let's, just... let's slow down from now. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, they're going to just be yeah. like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. They need to rewind. No, that's OK. That's OK. Yeah, I'll slow down completely from here. So yeah. um, I want to go into confidence. OK, so some of my students, actually, a lot of my students will come up to me and say, 
hey, I know how to speak English. I've been learning English for such a long time. But when I go to the doctors, I can't speak to the doctor and tell him or her that there's something wrong with my child. I just feel like I physically can't communicate with people because I'm afraid of making mistakes. I'm afraid of looking silly in front of someone or saying something wrong. So I want to talk about that. When someone feels that way and they feel almost crippled by their fear, by making mistakes and so on, what could they do? First of all, like, what are the first few steps that you would recommend that person to start doing? First of all, what is it that's kind of like, why are you scared? What's going to happen if you speak up? Like, what is it that you're scared of? Like, um, you're scared of like this person judging you, but why? Like, how is this going to affect you? Like, how, what's this doctor going to do to you? Like, what's going to happen if yeah. you actually do, um, you know, there's little things. And I think another thing would definitely be not to overthink. Uh, can we go back to the first one? I really love the first one you've said before we move on to the second one. So being aware of the consequences, what like sometimes we kind of make up this dinosaur coming to yeah. eat us up if we yeah. make a mistake. But what is actually going to happen? And that's like something that I recently went through, where sometimes when I'm creating stories on Instagram, I will make typos or mistakes that like I don't notice or I'm in a rush or whatever. But people will um, send me messages saying, oh, you made that mistake. And it's just like, I'm like I throw in the towel and I'm like, OK, I'm done with life, you know. Yeah, but then yeah. Wh- when I ask my question, myself that same question, mm-hmm. what's going to happen when I do make a mistake? And then so it's like someone's going to say something and then kind of keep asking that question. And then what I realized, what happens after the person said something about yeah. A mistake I made. I start to beat yeah. myself up. That's true. That's exactly what happens. Yeah. Because that person must have forgotten about it. But you, because you keep repeating in your head, oh my God, I made a mistake. Oh my God, what's going to happen? Oh my God, like this person might judge me. Oh my God, they might treat me. Like in your head, you feel like you're going to be mistreated. Like something's going to happen. But most times are not, none of that will happen. You, you'll actually say what you want to say. They'll try to understand what you're kind of like trying to explain. And I'm very sure they won't laugh at you. No doctor would laugh at you because you don't know how to communicate. Like you you don't actually know how to express um, yourself. And it's normal. Like imagine someone who actually speaks the language, yeah. but they struggle to communicate. Like there's people who speak like with me as someone like who's always been really quiet, suffered with like serious anxiety. I've always been really, really uncomfortable in any situation, like with a third, unless I know you personally, I struggle to communicate. So yeah. I've been t- through experiences where, like, I want to explain myself to someone, but I struggle and I'll say it really quietly and I'll be like, and they'll be like, sorry, repeat yourself. <laughs> and I'm like, and then I'll feel even more uncomfortable because this is exactly what's happening. Because I feel like if I say it quietly, I feel comfortable. I feel like, oh, I'm, my, I'm in my small box where I feel safe. Whereas if I actually express myself, I'm scared that, I'm scared that this person will judge me. And I think it's the same, um, someone who doesn't really speak English and they're going to the hospital and they need to speak to a doctor, literally going for it. That's, I think that's the best thing. Just going for it because I think we just learn from our mistakes because I've, I've learned a lot from my mistakes. Yeah. When before, well, as a perfectionist, always trying to make everything perfect, trying to make sure everything's polished. I struggle a lot with like, um, when someone says something like, so when someone disagrees with me or when someone kind of like makes some sort of comment about what I'm saying for me, like, it's like, like I, I just struggle so much and I feel like giving up and it happened a lot recently with regards to like when I post things on, um, Facebook mainly, not Instagram, I'll post things, um, based on my own thoughts and ideas and feelings. And I've decided like, I'm not, I don't want to filter anything that I post. And I do get comments from certain people who disagree. And I reached a stage where I feel comfortable enough not to explain myself because those are my opinions and thoughts. How did you get there though? How did you get to that point where you now feel like it's okay to express myself and if someone has a disagreement, so be it? I think 
because I was always low constantly. Like, I don't want to be in that low state all the time because I'm overthinking. I feel like mentally, like, I was really getting exhausted. Like, I'm always 24-7, like, thinking about everything, thinking about a post that, like, I've even got uh, an Instagram post that I want to release very soon about my journey with regards to, like, writing captions. I suffered, like, from serious like writer block like writing block I struggled a lot to kind of like write the reasons why um were mainly due to for example like that fear of judgment that fear that it's not perfect that fear that it's got like errors like grammatical errors and then I was like do you know what when you think about it why should that hinder you like why should that stop you from actually just going out there and since like stopping that, um, it's so easy for me to actually just write and it flows so easily without me having to think, oh, oh, I need this to be perfect or I need to come across as someone like who's an expert uh. or like so many things come up um, in my head. And right now, literally, like because I've been doing a lot of journaling lately where I feel like some sort of negativity around me when I send some sort of like danger in my head, <laughs> I'll sit down and write about it. Yeah. Why am I feeling like this? And I think that is something that would be very helpful for your students, like for them to sit down and think about the reasons why they've got those fears, the reasons why they don't feel comfortable or they don't feel confident enough to kind of like express themselves. So how does that help them by like being able to see the the problems and reflect and write it down and see it on a piece of paper or iPad or whatever you're using? Why does that help? How does that help um, someone I guess, like, recover from this? I think that helps in terms of releasing all of that that you've got within yourself. So instead of you overthinking and keeping it in your mind, like, you've got everything on, around your head, when you actually write it down, you're you're literally releasing. Like, it's like release work, that's what they call it. So, um, and it really has been really helpful for me because I never used to believe in it before, but now doing it, it's been really, really helpful. Whenever I get triggered, when something makes me really, like, upset, I'll just sit down and write like my, I'll, I'll just write and I'll, I'll write whatever comes into my head kind of thing. And um, it helps me a lot. When you read back, you're like, wow, I can't even believe it. Like some of the things that kind of like comes up is like nothing. Like it's it's something very small, but in your head, you kind of like tend to overthink, over worry. And I think that definitely um, makes things worse for you. Um, and I know like, for example, like if you're overthinking constantly it affects you in terms of like your memory it affects you in terms of like um your confidence it affects you in terms of like um how you can like go about life it's not just your education your personal life itself like you see yourself completely down um I've been in that state a lot and I remember like when I kind of like got married I struggled to kind of like cope with I think the dynamics between me and my husband because and a lot of it was to do with myself is because I didn't work on myself like I would struggle so much or like just place the blame on him and I would overthink about maybe he says maybe he'll he'll say something and I'll actually I'll twist it in my head yeah like I'll I'll take that word and kind of like analyze it completely wrong in my head and make things worse and I think it's the same in every situation yeah you're right um so like that's just going back to the first point that you made it which is we're really just scared of ourselves we're scared of like the beating up the like unkind comments um that we make about the situation so like if someone pointed out a mistake what does that mean what are you what are you making it mean about you as a person so um you're not a good teacher um the whole are You're not you worthy cut enough out for that. Yeah, are you worthy enough? I, That's I, the thing. I mean, yeah. sh- should you even be teaching anyone? Are you even any help to it? So lots of things that you would never ever say to your friend or your family member, um, but yet you're okay saying it to yourself. And I love that. I think that's probably what kills confidence: the internal, like unkind comments that we give ourselves like that we're not good enough that we're always making mistakes always 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 and then at the end no wonder you don't feel confident enough to speak to someone because you don't have your your own back you know when you do make that mistake right what happens after you make that mistake are you kind to yourself do you have your own back or are you beating yourself up for days where you just feel depleted i think that's such a good point that you made which is First, understand what happens after 
the situation. So when you make a mistake, write down what exactly is the thing that will happen. Be aware. And then the second yeah. thing or is... Or how you're feeling as well. Like literally write down yeah. how you're feeling. What's going to happen? Like what is happening? Like is there a problem? Is this doctor going to... Like going back to that um, example, is this doctor going to laugh at you? Is he going to treat you? Is he going to mistreat you? Is he going to judge you? Like maybe the next time you come to the hospital or, or the medical setting. Um, and most times I'm not. When you ask yourself these questions, you realize that a lot of the answers that come up. Yeah. Basically predict and just kind of not predict, but like think about the worst case scenario. What's going to happen and then you do put yourself in those situations and something happens, like you make a mistake, write down everything that you're feeling and what it's making you feel so that you're aware of. It's kind of almost like matching what you thought before with what you're actually feeling in the moment. And then bringing that, you know, taking care of yourself in that moment as part of the steps that you're taking. So what would be the next thing that you do? Like, is there anything else that you would recommend in terms of, let's see, like, let's take, um, for example, the person wants to do something that scares them. I mean, not nobody really wants to do things that scare them. Why would you recommend someone to go ahead? And I love the, like going back to the beginning where you were like, these are the things I'm planning to do. And <laughs> I know they scare the hell out of you. Like you want to go Instagram live as your next um, step. Yeah. Why is it that you, first of all, you've been through lots of lots of scary things in the past year, but now you're making plans to do more scary things. I'd love to know why. <laughs> To be honest, like, I want to be able to connect with more people. I want more people to kind of, like, be aware of, like, what I've got to offer. Like, um, I want to share my own experiences because I know I'm sure there's loads of people out there who kind of, like, who have been going through the same thing that I have. Um, and I'm sure, like, literally me is talking about my own experiences and um, sharing my own learning would actually benefit a lot. Um, in terms of like how I've been doing this and how I feel like um, someone who's interested in like kind of like um, pushing themselves out there it's definitely um, taking it slow I'm not gonna I've not been forcing myself I've not been like oh no I need to go on a live like right now I've not been doing that because I need to be comfortable enough to do that so what I did was slowly slowly kind of like um, with me with regards to like writing the captions I struggled because I used to think oh my god this is terrible writing this is like mediocre this is not good enough and I would struggle and struggle for so long and I'll try to create a post and it'll take me like weeks before I post it um and then eventually I just like you know what I think I kind of like I've always been very good like I've been into like writing copywriting and um but I didn't realize that it's something I actually enjoy so um with regards to kind of like showing up online and me actually being comfortable enough to do so, um, I took the steps where I kind of like started off like writing my captions, put myself out there, talking about my story without me having to kind of like voice myself. Like there was no, um, I didn't do any audio, I didn't do any videos, I didn't do any of that um, any photos in fact but what I did was after that kind of like progressed to podcast and I was happy enough to be to have featured like three podcasts and this is my fourth and with the first one I remember I was panicking I was like oh my god I can't do this all these thoughts kept coming into my head um I spoke to the she was a coach friend of mine I spoke to her and I told her what's going to happen can you send me like some sort of plan so that I can like plan ahead so she did send me uh some questions and I didn't I remember writing down like all the answers but when it came to actually doing the podcast I couldn't even follow the answers because it came naturally because you know like when you have this thing where um when I stopped kind of like thinking about all those things that will happen when I stopped thinking about um every negative thing that I was thinking about before the podcast, it was so easy. Like I was able to do it and I was like, wow, if I can do this, I can do another one. And and then I remember with the next one, uh, this other lady um, I met at an event talking about a podcast and everything. And I was like, oh, I'll be, I'll be interested to kind of like, um, I'm interested in kind of like featuring. And she actually said, yeah. And we kind of like got on with it. And it was really, really good. And the third podcast was actually a very interesting one because I'm the one who messaged this lady and I was like, I would love to feature in your podcast. Like, and I was really scared because this lady has, um, she's featured really like um, people are quite 
popular like yeah. I don't know popular in terms of like people who are kind of like well known yeah. like on Instagram and social media and here I am like uh, here I am rather like coming out from like nowhere <laughs> and I and I messaged Celine and I told her I really want to feature in your podcast I love what you've got to offer and I just want to kind of like be on there and share my own kind of like thoughts and experiences and I remember she didn't reply back straight away but after like a few days she did respond and she said yes let's do it and um, before we did the whole podcast, we did a small kind of like Zoom meeting just to assess like if I'm suitable kind of like to to be uh, on the podcast. And she was like really happy. And we did the podcast like a week later and it went really, really well. And that was like my biggest, I think that was a, the best podcast that I've done because it kind of like, I was out of my comfort zone. I approached this lady and told her that I'm interested in featuring. I, despite knowing that there's so many other people on there, people who have been doing this for years and me kind of like not having much experience in terms of like um, the online space. Um, but it went really well. It was really good. And the lady now, like she's a really good friend of mine. Like um, she's amazing, like very inspiring. So uh, there's more positive that came out of those um, podcast features the negatives um after the podcast what I did was I got a Facebook group um my coach kind of like handed me the, that Facebook group to kind of like manage and I was really scared to kind of like do much on there but what I did was I've had a few people interested in like doing interviews on um on the Facebook live and I did one and then I did a second and it went really really well and people messaging me saying wow like I loved that feature like that that live that you did and that kind of like gave me even more confidence like it kind of like stopped me from overthinking stopped me from thinking oh who are you to kind of like put yourself out there um do you actually have enough kind of like knowledge to kind of like share honestly it's been a very good experience um I do sometimes get triggered like there's times when I go for like weeks where I'm not really showing up online when I'm not really posting much yeah. when I'm not really talking and that does take you back to that space where you feel like oh I don't feel comfortable enough I feel, I feel like you're like... describing my life you know <laughs> because it is if you stop doing these things that are like if you stop taking the steps that like put you a little bit out of outside your comfort zone you do go back to that space where you feel scared again to do it I love that so much I think you do need to go back to that point where it's I mean you keep going so you're not going back to the point where you go to I don't want to do anything anymore so um I want to like summarize what we spoke about today because I think you've given some really really amazing tips Thank for, you so much. Um, I've got a lot more to give, but <laughs> I guess we don't have enough time. So No, yeah. you've, I think I think the steps that we've given today is more than enough for people to start um stuff happen so that like they can start doing these things so that they can actually see a difference in their English and their confidence and so on. So I just want to quickly summarize. Um step one is to write down what you think is going to happen. Um, so what is it that you're scared of? What is the worst case scenario? Step two is to, when something does happen, when you do make a mistake or someone says something about your mistakes, then writing down what you're feeling, being aware of your emotions, um, understanding what the emotions are. And then the third step, which I love, is simplifying everything step by step. What's the simplest, smallest thing that will push you one step closer to being a more confident person? Did I get the the three steps right? Yeah, I think that's about it. So literally analyzing the situation, kind of like figuring out the reasons why you're feeling, why you've got those feelings, why you've got that fear. And literally, definitely kind of like taking it slow, don't like push yourself out there if you're not comfortable enough I think take it slow do like take various uh steps so that you're actually confident enough to kind of like progress out there by yourself where um I know like sometimes you get like I think we kind of like see what others are doing so maybe you've got someone in a similar situation but they're a bit more comfortable so they're able to kind of like, express it as well so you might be comparing yourself to that person maybe stop comparing yourself to others as well and just yeah and you'll be very like I think not only will the confidence help you in terms of like communicating I think it will help you in terms of like 
your personal development, your growth, family life, everything, to be honest, like all kinds of like spheres um, in your life. Thank you so much, Rhoda. This has been an amazing um, podcast. I've loved listening to you. So I know everybody who's listening is going <laughs> to really love these uh, tips that you've given them. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your time with us. I know you're in a situation where it's, it's yeah. difficult. It was un- I couldn't avoid it today. So yeah, no. <laughs> sorry about that. And I hope we don't have any background noise on the podcast, hopefully. So yeah, and I would love to feature again. And it would be really nice to kind of like do something where um, I would love to meet some of your students because I think it would be really good to kind of like, yeah, you know, I'm sure they'd love to, to meet you, Rhoda. Um, so I'm going to ask you just a few questions, um, in regards to you, are you learning any new languages at the moment? Actually, yes, I am. So I'm in Egypt currently where my family lives and I've been, I do know basic Arabic, but it's been a long time since I practiced, but I've been trying to kind of like overcome it. And I do get this thing where I don't feel comfortable enough to express myself, whereas <laughs> I know how to kind of like say certain things. So I think my next step is definitely to kind of like go out there and just like get on with it and just express myself without feeling like, oh no, like I'm not saying it correctly yeah. or I'm scared or reliant on like my mom and my siblings. I'm like, you guys say it, you, you speak for me or, <laughs> or going with the whole thing. Oh, I don't speak Arabic. I speak English only. Um, I think, yeah, maybe this part is also kind of like <laughs> beneficial for me currently, like right now, like literally like just going for it. And, yeah. um, and I know it's practice that makes perfect. Like now being in the country and like hearing so many people like communicating I've been picking up much more than I ever have um I think learning on your own like when you just sitting down and learning by yourself um so get going out there definitely helps a lot and just pushing yourself to communicate. Um, yeah, yeah definitely I love how you switched your mindset you're like yes I am scared of like communicating I am it's <laughs> crazy um because I've been doing that a lot and I like I think it's this thing like we're all human we all go through the same thing you can like train like you can work on your personal development you can work on your mindset and everything but we're human at the end of the day they yeah. always go back into the state it's, it's just the way you kind of like overcome those fears how you can like switch your mindset that kind of like helps you in any situation you're in amazing and i know i can do it that's the thing so with me like right now i'm like i can do this so i i'm like yes i can do this i'm gonna do it <laughs> um yeah great um and the next question is what's your favorite english word I like I like very kind of like old English. So I like stuff like fathom and <laughs> stuff like um, I can't fathom that or like I just I like to I like those kind of like really formal yeah, words. And okay. I do try I, I do use it a lot. And sometimes I'm like oh shit, like I need to I probably need to kind of like rephrase some of the like when I'm writing captions. Sometimes like super formal. And I'm like oh maybe it's a bit too formal. I, I might need to like rephrase it so it's more um, it's easier to kind of like digest. More people come like kind of like relate to it so yeah um I don't have a particular word but I do love like really old kind of like words <laughs> amazing um and the last thing is um what do you think it takes to be um a fearless English learner I think definitely working on your mindset switching that mindset you thinking that you can't do it you're not worth it you're not capable to I can do it I'm capable I'm worth it like I have that confidence I I'm gonna do like I think thinking more positively, like being very positive uh, with yourself as well, like be treat, be nice to yourself, definitely. Like just be kind to yourself. Um, just pushing through regardless. If you're going through like a bad time or if you're struggling to kind of like keep up like with your learning or um, you're going through something maybe like behind the scenes, just don't give up. Love it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rhoda. Um, thank and thank, thank you, you guys for listening to this conversation. Um, send me a message or send Rhoda a message. I'll have all of her information in the show notes. Send her a message and tell her which um, tip you like the most and which one you're going to start um, utilizing and using in your own life. So I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. <laughs>